Before I come in, you should know, I have gas. For the record, not your worst opening line. Check it out. It's the gas I use in my free electron laser to support high voltages, but it also has an interesting secondary use. Here, read this in. But before I do it, if you're a cop, you have to tell me, right? Just try it. What's it supposed to? Oh my God, this is so. <laughs> uh. You are a mean one, Mr. Grinch. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> Leonard, I am your father. <laughs> I have never been more attracted to a woman who sounds like a man in my life. Oh. The acceptable responses when you see it are awesome or nothing. <laughs> what about? Cookies. This is Ira Plato, and you're listening to NPR's Science Friday. Joining us today by phone from his office in Pasadena, California, is Dr. Sheldon Cooper. Oh, this is going to be a Wyatt. Thanks for being with us today, Dr. Cooper. My pleasure, Ira. Now, let's talk about magnetic monopoles. Can you explain to our audience just what a monopole is? Of course. First, consider an ordinary magnet, which has, as even the most uneducated in your audience must know, two poles. <clears throat> uh, north and south pole. If you cut that in half, you have two smaller magnets, each with its own north and south pole. Uh, Dr. Cooper, I think there might be something wrong with our connection. Uh, no, I hear you fine. As I was saying, an ordinary magnet has two poles. The primary characteristic of a monopole is that it has only one pole, hence monopole. A requirement for string theory, or hemisphere, if you will, is the existence of monopole. 